So our friends over at VMware released Workstation Player 14 the other day, and what better way to celebrate than to give it a test drive? Now it's interesting as they seem to have completely skipped over VMware Workstation Player 13, but this version supports a bunch of new distros, specifically new kernel versions, and apparently they updated the UI to use GTK3. So let's dive right on in. So the installer has changed just a little bit. Maybe they slapped a new coat of paint on it, but it's pretty much the same thing as before. I don't remember their analytics program being called the VMware Customer Experience Improvement Program. Boy, that's a mouthful. And since this is Workstation Player, we don't need a license because we're not using it for commercial purposes. And just like that, the installation is finished. So while in this video we will be giving VMware 14 a test drive, if you expect us to test it on a Linux distribution, you will be sorely mistaken. From time to time I am forced to use Windows for whatever reason. For every Windows install I use, there's a set list of changes that I make to hopefully make the system a bit more faster, more secure. Now for these changes, I've really only done a little bit of research because I don't use Windows every day. And I know that this is not a comprehensive list of changes that you can make to make your system faster or more secure, more private or whatever. But the changes I'll make in this video take like five minutes. They're really simple and I do these for every Windows install that I use. Oh yeah, and absolutely nothing has changed in VMware 14 when setting up a VM or operating system. Even though they updated it with GTK3, it looks and feels the exact same. So I know nobody here particularly loves Windows, let alone installing Windows, so I'm just going to jump past all this and go straight into the post-install configuration bullshit. So once I've booted into Windows the first time on a fresh install, the first thing I like to do is check the display drivers. Gotta check to make sure that the VMware tools were correctly and successfully installed. And I always check the DirectX diagnostic tools to make sure that everything is working right we've got the right DirectX version. Unfortunately, the VMware display driver still only supports DirectX 10 and not 10.1, but 3D acceleration is enabled, so we got that going for us. So once I've checked that VMware has done its job and all of the VMware tools and stuff is installed, I go straight to apps and features and start uninstalling all of the frivolous bloatware and other bullshit I can find. Now in this video I only made one pass at this section and when I was finished recording all the clips I went back and I noticed that there were more applications installed here. I don't know where they came from. If you're planning on running Windows for more than like a day or a week or two or whatever you should probably go back and check to make sure that Microsoft didn't turn around and install more applications behind your back. It's unbelievable to me that they have the ability to install applications on your computer without you knowing about it. But at any rate, just go through this entire list and uninstall everything. Once you've gone through the apps and feature list, be sure to uninstall any optional features or any other excessive or frivolous Windows features that you don't want. Since the only reason why I use this VM is to test out games and stuff, I pretty much uninstall everything. Since a number of the applications I uninstalled require restarts for whatever reason, the next logical step is to update the damn machine because that's gonna require a stupid restart. This part's pretty straightforward, just tell Windows to update. Once the update is done, the next thing I like to do is make a meager attempt at trying to make the whole operating system a little bit faster. I remember back when the start menu was a simple little menu that could pop up and show you all the applications you have installed on your system. And I think it was Windows 7 where they added search and that was cool. Windows 8 came out and screwed it up real bad and then Windows 10 came out and just took it to the next level. This thing is a mess. So I clean the start menu up and then I go to the system properties into the performance section and completely disable all of the 3D effects like compositing and all the other windowing effects. I remember with Windows Vista and to a lesser extent Windows 7 turning these features off made somewhat of an impact for games but I'm not sure if it really does with Windows 10. Another thing I do to try to squeeze a little bit more performance, and this is probably just a carryover from my Windows Vista and Windows 7 days, is I disable indexing on the hard drive. Now I remember reading somewhere that indexing sort of slows your I.O. down or something like that, but the bottom line is that this is a VM and the hard drive is not actually a hard drive, it's just a file, and I have absolutely no reason to index it anyway, so I might as well just turn it off. Next up is privacy settings. Now since this is a VM, I could really care less if Microsoft collects any data on this, but it's a good practice in general just to turn all of this nonsense off. I basically just go into the privacy settings and switch everything off. And of course there's a lot of crap that you can't actually turn off like feedback and diagnostics, you can switch it to basic, but I mean I guess that's as good as it's going to get. Now the last thing I do once everything else in this list is done is install Chocolatey. 
Now, if you don't know what Chocolaty is, I made a video about it a few months ago, I think. It's this really, really awesome, awesome tool that you can install on Windows to install software, very similar to how you install software on Linux. The only bad thing about Chocolaty is that it uses PowerShell, and the command to install it is kind of a pain, so you're better off just going to the website and copying the command and pasting it straight into the terminal. Once I've got Chocolaty installed, I use it to install all of the other applications I need. So obviously this isn't like a power user's guide to tuning or tweaking your Windows install or whatever. There's a lot of stuff I didn't cover like MS config and registry hacks and all this other nonsense that people do to get better performance out of their Windows install. And I know there's going to be folks in the comments that say stuff like, oh, Windows sucks or Microsoft sucks, just don't use Windows. And I mean, that's not an option for some people. Sometimes you have to use Windows. And it's my opinion that if you have to use Windows, then you might as well make it harder for them to spy on you or install bad software on your system or whatever the hell else they like to do. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and all that stuff. I appreciate your support, and thanks for watching.